Hello everyone and welcome to rural Germany. In this episode we are going to finish up the town which consists of placing a lot of houses, detailing a lot of gardens and we are going to build a castle in the middle of the town. This is basically a rounding up episode to finish up all the stuff that we've done so far so we can start on the outskirts and the nature stuff in the next episode so over here you see me finish up this little corner that was left to do in this part of the town again a lot of height difference but this time we're going to mask most of it with trees instead of placing a gigantic wall so yeah as i said the first few minutes of the video will be pretty much similar to the last few minutes of previous episode but then way better paced because I actually spent time editing every second of it to make sure that we could have a lot of detailing in a short amount of time without it getting boring to watch. The main reason for all these cuts is that I had to condense 12 hours of footage into a 15 minute video which is to say the least pretty hard especially when it comes to garden detailing because I usually have to zoom in a lot to check if everything is all right and that means that i can't speed it up that much because the camera would just fly everywhere on your screen but i've learned from this experience and in the next episode which i already recorded a part of i am moving way less with the camera so i can speed it up more and that way i have to do less cuts to still make it fit into the video so over here we are continuing on the gardens on the wall. We are using a lot of hedges, especially on the edge to make sure the kids don't fall off. We are placing some grass and trees too, including a very wild garden. And of course we need some comfortable chairs for people to enjoy the view from their high spot. So now we've finished that part of the town, we are moving on to a more central part of the town. We're now filling in the area on the inside of the corner that the main street does down to the bridge. This became a bit trickier because there was a gradual height difference and we couldn't really add a wall here. So I ended up building another road and just masking a lot of the height difference with trees and bushes. So over here you see me changing the ruin texture to a similar one as the grass texture. I've been struggling with this since the beginning of the series and the problem was that this road that I'm using for the country roads had a strip of gravel next to the road that you couldn't remove with surface painter. So in the beginning I tried to fix this with ploppable grass and surface networks and these kind of stuff. but. It was just really hard to do that on a slope, so luckily I got the idea to search for a ruin theme that was the same as the grass theme, and I was even more lucky that the theme I was already using for the grass, La Viente, already had a grass texture for the ruin. So what I did then is change the ruin texture to the one from La Viente, and I just painted that over the immovable strip of gravel next to the road. So while I was talking about my struggles with the ruin texture, we detailed the interchange from previous video with some trees and bushes and we started placing houses along the second big road in the town. 
that leads from the outside to the corner of the other main road in the middle of the town. So we continue building houses, this time a bit higher up the hill. And you see I use the asphalt road of Runny X to showcase that not every road is in such a good state as the other roads in the town are. Just because this road is a pretty non-used road and unlike the dead end road that we built in the center of the town this is a bit more in the outskirts so nobody would really care to fix this because you'll see that in the detailing of the gardens too this is clearly the poorer part of the town just because it's not really central like the other part was pretty rich because originally there was a bridge there so they would live from the toll and this part is not specifically been built later, but it just has less influence on the bridge and these people would most likely be more into farming and woodcutting. So as you see, we placed a wall here to cover the height difference. And I promise you, this is the last wall, actually the last big wall. There will be one or two smaller ones, but not as big and long as this one. And as we are just detailing a few gardens, I'll be back in a minute. So here we are placing a bigger and clearly richer house and this used to be a house with a pretty big amount of land around it until the town got so far that it basically surrounded the big house and that is how a fairly rich house ends up in a compared with the rest of the town poor neighborhood of course if you live in this town you're not poor because it is an excellent location for a town but we're talking about a relatively poor neighborhood then you see me constructing a little dead end road and this is going to be a little parking in the back of the houses that you see there because these are all just like the first house we built a few seconds ago, richer houses compared to the poor neighborhood a bit more down. These houses weren't as big as the other one, but they are nowadays pretty rich compared to the rest of the neighborhood. So I decided to add a little parking place at the back of these houses so they don't have to park downhill and have to walk up their driveway all the time. We will also end up placing a few buildings around this parking spot so this is not only used as a parking for the richer houses, but also for another reason, which I will explain when we are building these buildings. So I was right when I said that the previous wall wasn't the last one and that we would have a few small ones because here is one of them. We're adding in this wall because there was a need of parking places along this street as we will have a pretty big thing close to this street with this street being the best access road for cars. The wall also separates the richer houses from the relatively poor neighborhood and gives these richer houses a flat front garden which is also pretty appreciated by these people.
So we are starting to place houses again and filling up the rest of the town. And over here you see what I mean by the building next to the parking lot. This is the elementary school of the town and it is in a pretty weird place because it's not central at all. This is because the old school was a military sleeping place in the second world war and got bombed. After the war they were searching for another building to function as school until they built a new one. But they never built a new one. They just built a house there and the school stayed in the spot where it is right now. Originally this school was a barn that was owned by the same big house as we talked about a few minutes ago but it got abandoned after the town expanded so this was the perfect place for the school to temporarily be in which now turned into an actual school and it will probably never change. So you saw this little block of houses that we built while I was talking about the school and that we are detailing right now and this is again a good example of the town surrounding old farms because this was a small community with a farmhouse and a few barns and you can still see the road layout which was the original fence the barns got demolished and the taller houses got placed there instead the one fachwerk house that i still placed was the original farmhouse but now you don't see anything of it anymore a part of a block of houses that looks like a pretty close community we are now rounding up placing and detailing the houses and i'll see you guys in a minute for what will probably be the title of this video the castle Yes, you heard me right a minute ago, we are going to build a castle in Erstendorf. That is the reason that we kept these walls over here without placing anything on top of them. And that is also why we needed the parking on the road behind. So the story behind this castle is that in the Middle Ages, when this bridge was one of the only connections between this and the other side of the river, which it still is. The people of Ersendorf built this castle to rule about the bridge and make the people that wanted to pass the bridge pay a high amount of toll. At some point, the people from the flatter part of the region, which will be built later on, tried to take the castle because they wanted to control the bridge. The modern highway bridge was not there at the time being, but they failed and lost. So the castle still survived, but around 10 years later, that was in the end of the Middle Ages, when the cities, thus the flat area, got more power and more and more decided what they wanted to do themselves instead of having one ruler deciding it for them. There was a gigantic fire and the castle that had wooden floors and a wooden roof burned down and the ruins stayed there. The ruler of Ersendorf at the time died in the fire, with many people wanting to take his spot and rule over the town. The people from the flat area, which I don't have a name for yet, took the opportunity and took over the power in Ersendorf because there was no organized military force as their ruler died and they were all fighting who was going to be the new ruler. And so the castle got never rebuilt and the people in the flat area controlled the town. 
The reason that they didn't rebuild the castle was because they simply didn't have any money because the war had cost them a lot of money. So that was the story of the Ersendorf castle which standed for 264 years before getting destroyed by a fire. So technically Ersendorf castle never got taken by an enemy but by something even stronger than an enemy which I think city planner players can relate to a fire. Thank you for watching, let me know if I should do more of these story times and let me know any good stories if you have some. And then I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.